Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all keeping well on this uh, very windy day. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, checking in with your students. Um, so this is is a good time, I think, in semester to be looking at um, the idea of data in Canvas and Zoom and anything else that generates sort of useful information that we can use to maybe uh, check in and communicate with students that are at risk or otherwise. So um, I suppose as with the other uh, training sessions, if you have any questions through uh, the session, if you wouldn't mind putting them into your the, the Q&A feature in the bottom, um, and also at the end, we'll have a kind of a, a, a space for questions as well. Also, my colleagues are looking at um, YouTube for anyone that's that's um, live on YouTube so you can ask questions in there as well. OK, so we'll keep it to maybe the 30 to 40 minutes, roughly. Um, and today we're going to look at uh, some tools for checking in. Uh, I think largely we're going to be talking today about sort of learning analytics and how we can make uh, judgments based on the information that we have available to us. Um, the two main tools that generate data would be Canvas and Zoom. And we'll also look at some tips to get you started in maybe uh, actioning some of the insights that you see are, are, are uh, come across in those tools. OK, so um, I suppose in terms of tools for checking in, there are two platforms. We have Canvas and we have Zoom, um, but both of them generate uh, useful data. And I suppose part of the trick is in um, in knowing how to interpret that data and maybe action upon it if, if required. So in Canvas, a lot of you are probably aware of all of the standard tools that you have for communication and for sort of data analysis. So the inbox would be the very basic communication feature within Canvas, and that's like your equivalent of webmail. So it's the, the method by which you can communicate with students directly or with student groups. Um, so um, we would have covered that in previous training. I'm not going to do it again today, but I suppose it's worth knowing that I suppose if you're looking at insights in terms of analytics, um, maybe the next logical step would be to communicate with your students. And typically you do that through the inbox. Your grades area, your grade book is another area where you can basically uh, view any of the, the grades and feedback or uh, submissions or lack thereof in uh, Canvas and also have the ability there to communicate with students. So communication is a, is a common thread across any of this stuff. Basically, if you are able to find out something that maybe the next step is to communicate with the students and to maybe direct them towards learning resources or uh, to other um, other things. So uh, learning analytics, then, are, are, I suppose, part of this morning session are going to be uh, largely looking at that. Le learning analytics are really useful in terms of just giving you insight into th things like page views, um, participations and so on. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. Student interaction reports um, are really useful as a sort of a bird's eye view of um, you know, your various modules and uh, how students are accessing them and how they're getting on with their grades and, and assignments. Discussion forums and groups I've covered previously. Um, these are really useful for checking in also. And, um, you know, you can use discussion forums, obviously, to set up um, you know, assignment specific discussions and so on. Groups also for students that want to, you know, that start group work around particular topics. All of these things, I think, um, work in together um, and they work together rather than as individual items or, or functionality. Zoom also has analytics and data um, and, you know, we're gathering, I suppose, as lecturers, we have a, a large amount of data to our um, at our fingertips, really, in terms of any of the live classes or recorded sessions. Um, so Dara is going to cover recording analytics in a bit more detail later on in the week on the Thursday session, which focuses more on Zoom. But um, I'm also going to touch on it today in terms of what you can do within Canvas. 
Okay, so let's get started. So one of the first things, I suppose they're the tools for checking in. Uh, I want to focus, because we've covered inbox and grades and discussion forums and groups already, and if you haven't, um, you can uh, view our pre previous recordings. So there's one from uh, a couple of weeks ago on that specifically. Uh, learning analytics I'm going to focus on for the first few minutes here. So I suppose, first of all, what are learning analytics? They are I suppose it's the concept is it was applying principles of data analytics to student learning. So it's the idea that you can gather up um, data that you can get valuable insights into the students learning and how they're getting on. And um, with those actionable insights, you can um, you, you can basically uh, perform almost like interventions at points in time throughout the semester. Um, I suppose for all of the benefits that something like learning analytics can offer, it's not a sim silver bullet. It's not going to answer, um, you know, magical, uh, it's not going to provide magical answers to questions that you, you may have in terms of the engagement of, of users and so on. But it is really positive in terms of maybe um, identifying students that are possibly at risk, but also working into a broader strategy that you might have in terms of um, taking effective action. Um, for a learning analytics workflow, I suppose you're, you're looking at a few common elements. So those elements are communication, which I mentioned earlier. So that's the idea of using your inbox and using discussions and groups and one to one sessions and Zoom uh, meetings and so on. Communication, obviously a common thread there. Assessment is another one. So a lot of data generated from assessment. And also maybe things that you can do in terms of assessment. Formative assessment is great at gauging understanding throughout the, the semester rather than, you know, having it always um, heavily weighted on summative assessment, you know, check in surveys, etc. really useful. And they all feed into almost like a, an assessment theme uh, and learning resources. So learning resources are the things we're putting up every day. Um, they're slides, they're uh, supplementing or supplement of content, um, anything that we use to, uh, to to give the student more resources on top of maybe the, the live sessions that we deliver. And learning resources can be, you know, the recordings, obviously, that we generate, but also then any of the other uh, things that we add in Canvas. Um, so really interesting, I suppose, about the time right now is that we're in a really optimal point with which to maybe look at meaningful patterns between, uh, I suppose, data patterns in Canvas and in Zoom. So the literature suggests that, you know, weeks four to, four, or to six, which we're bang on right now, we're in week five, is uh, a point at which you'll see some meaningful data generated. That data typically doesn't emerge until around now because, you know, I suppose you're going to have students at various levels of interaction um, through the uh, semester. So, you know, weeks one, weeks two aren't going to generate a lot of rich participatory information. It's really until maybe you have a few formative assessments, even a even a summative one earlier on in those uh, first six weeks that you get to get a good idea of the engagement of your students in a module and, and how they're getting on. And I suppose more importantly, to think of uh, how you can maybe intervene with students that you think may be slightly at risk, those that are not engaging with the content, those that haven't submitted assignments, those that aren't really engaging with, you know, uh, activities that you set like discussions and groups and so on. Um, so I suppose the the idea here is that we can look at this data and uh, and I suppose in a meaningful way uh, look at how we can uh, intervene or communicate with students or provide them with additional resources. Um, so in terms of the using analytics, learning analytics, there's a few maybe a, a three pronged approach that you can look at. I suppose are three main elements. They are the justification. So the justification looks at the system data, the data that's generated by, in our case, Canvas and Zoom, and how that how the system is being used. So for us, if we're looking at Canvas, we're looking at things like page views. Uh, we're looking at uh, access logs, so students accessing Canvas or accessing a module, students submitting assignments, and students communicating with, with you, the lecturer. 
um, intervention then looks at how we can identify maybe potentially at risk students and how we can meet their needs. And when I say meeting their needs, you know, sometimes all that requires is for you to ask the students to reflect on something, maybe to provide them with an additional resource or to remind them of something that had happened previously in the semester. So, you know, at week, we're at week five right now, maybe it's even just simply um, pointing them towards something that you, you, uh, you released in your module, maybe earlier on, maybe you had some sort of um, an activity or survey or something that they didn't um, engage with and really just asking them to to sort of engage with those um, you know it's not about penalizing students or it's not about um, making students feel like they're at a disadvantage or that they're maybe not performing optimally it's really just nudges it's 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 ways of you know helping the student out and helping them to keep up with the content so they don't fall behind and the learning i suppose is kind of related to that it's looking at at maybe the effectiveness of the content that you're putting up maybe there's um maybe in terms of how you're engaging with students are there students that are falling behind because they're not engaging with live sessions or with uh, activities and i suppose in the learning it's looking at maybe um providing some additional resources or again just pointing you know wayfinding really for the student within the module so when we look at canvas and the data that is generated in canvas there's a few main things and i've, I've mentioned a few of these already so Canvas deals in things like page views. So page views um, are generated when students basically access anything under a unit. So that could be um, it could be a, a document, it could be a page, it could be a um, it could be the LTI, which is Zoom. So Zoom is is uh, identified as an LTI tool in, in Canvas, and you can see how many times a student would have um, accessed that participation relates to uh, things like assignments and discussions uh, usually you know things that are almost like assignment related but not necessarily so in this in the case of discussion so participations are measured by uh, those things that students do in participatory mode so they're contributing into a discussion they're submitting an assignment whether it's a, a graded or not graded assignment and then your grades are another area then that canvas data is available to you and I'll show you how, how that's uh, how that you can kind of maybe look at that and interrogate that a bit later on as well. Uh, other data that Canvas has is uh, things like the the last activity. So, you know, a very simple thing. If a student hasn't interacted with Canvas or in, with your module with a while, that is a an actionable insight that you have, something that you can maybe just touch in with them in a very friendly way. You know, you can communicate with them directly. Again, with these tools, there's a it's a, there's there's basically a communication. Um, parts to them where you can basically just very quickly communicate with the student through the learning analytics through the the grades area or through the inbox um, and the useful thing would, would maybe say last activity is if a student hasn't interacted since week one uh, this is a good time maybe to just send them a friendly message to say i i, I noticed that you haven't engaged with the module uh since uh x you know what whatever day it was or date um just checking in um Total activity is how long students interact within the module. That's maybe useful of just getting an idea of, of, of sort of the numbers across the module. And again, you'll start to maybe see students that aren't, um, you know, I suppose a very basic measure of how students are interacting within a module would even be, are they accessing the Zoom uh, link? Are they accessing the, the live sessions or the recordings? If they're not, obviously there's something um, to, to uh, maybe engage with them there and also then other things like page views um, and total um, the total activity requires a two minute page view minimum so uh, for, for sort of accurate information accurate um, sort of reporting um, something else I suppose in terms of what canvas data provides you it provides you a timestamps for submissions uh, timestamps for things like discussions, assignments, and quizzes. And obviously that stuff is really useful for us, not only maybe to see students that haven't engaged with content, but even just as a, a sort of a backup for us as lecturers, if there was any, ever any question that uh, maybe a student submitted or, or didn't submit, 
you know everything is time stamped everything is pretty clear in terms of when when and and what got completed i suppose and then additionally uh quizzes um you you probably noticed with new quizzes there's a lot of analytic uh, or data uh, information generated within that tool uh, that you can kind of break down you know the amount of time that a student took to take the assignment or assessment and also you know just um, time to complete and time on each question etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know i'm not going to go into that in in detail because that also has been covered in previous sessions but just to be aware i suppose you have you know participation information assignment uh, submissions grades but you also then have a uh, time information associated with their activity their total activity and any submissions made as well um, so canvas analytics tracks uh, interactions both on the web browser and on the mobile app so if there's any, ever any question i suppose you know you're you're getting data from both of those platforms which is which is important obviously you don't want to have a, a sort of a gap in your in your data um, it's also worth noting, and this is very important, I suppose, maybe there's an assumption that this is real time data. It's not really in, in actuality. So with Canvas, um, because uh, this is uh, the, the, the analytics tool is what's called a, a, an LTI tool. It's a it's an integrated tool. It's not it, 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 it's, it's core to Canvas, but it's it, there's a delay in how it reports content. So data is refreshed in this tool. Um, every 24 hours and um it could be delayed by 24 hours it depends again on on activity but generally i think that the data is quite sound and i suppose it's it's another reason to maybe um look at your data now in this at this point in time week five week six um because you know you're you're going to have a, an accumulation of data that you can look at and 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 provide some meaning to um, and sometimes report data may be delayed as well. This, these are kind of caveats provided by Canvas themselves. But, um, you know, I think once you note that, it's like, I suppose, our own scripts that run from Banner. There is, you know, that happens twice a day. It's not real time. It happens uh, in, in the afternoon and it happens, um, I think, about three o'clock in the morning or something like that. So it's just worth noting, I suppose, in case you're thinking that the, the data is generated in real time. It's not. Okay, so before I just run into the analytics tool, I just want to give you a view of what maybe that tool looks like. So within Canvas, you have um, uh, this tool called the new analytics tool. Um, and the new analytics tool provides some key information and, and it really depends on um, on your assignments. So assignments are the, the guys that you see popping up here in, in the, the kind of the plotted diagram, discussions and quizzes. So these three things are what, Kind of generate participations uh, and they're also grade based here so some of them obviously are have no grades here so these are no grade assignments so maybe things that you've used to uh, that are maybe just formative assessment activities or maybe you're using the tool for something else you know you could use a quiz as a survey tool for example where, where there wouldn't be any grade associated with it but that you're gathering some feedback from your students so the assignments, discussions, and quizzes generate what are called participations. And this is where you have that kind of course grade. And you know it's nicely color um, labeled here as well. So those things generate kind of dots on that diagram uh, that are color, um, uh, color labeled. Now, the other thing you have as well within um, the new analytics tool is if you have any sections. So if you have um, a module which a lot of you might have uh, which is cross-listed uh, you will have multiple sections within that module so a cross-listed module is where you have a module that has been merged with other modules so you have multiple uh, groups multiple student groups in the one module and within that module you'll actually see multiple sections that represent each of those groups so if, if you're ever uh, wondering about cross-listing or what that means we have a lot of documentation on that in our in our help resource but i suppose just in terms of what um, a new analytics area might look like this this is maybe what you might see um, at week five or six depending on how many assignments you have now if you don't have any assignments at that point it doesn't really that that's not a that doesn't really matter either 
you know, you have weekly online activity, you have student activity and you have reports as well. And all of these are relating more to page views and resources and, and last activity rather than being relating specifically to assignments and grades. One really useful thing I find, and this is even just when you come in, when you start your module is the idea that you can actually, th this reports area is quite new within the new analytics tool. Um, but one of the, the really useful things I find is that you can actually export your class list out of Canvas. That's a really nice way of just basically exporting um, the class list. And maybe if you have any, any issue with uh, students that aren't accessing the module because they're not on um, banner for some reason or there's an admissions issue, particularly if it's earlier on in the semester, I think this tool is quite useful. So in the reports area, you have a number of reports you can run. You can see them kind of grayed out there, um, missing assignment, late assignments, uh, excuse assignments, class roster. And all of these reports are actually CSV files that you can export and uh, and interpret yourself or use yourself. Um, so I suppose back to the screenshot, you have a number of key areas, uh, the course grade, which is grade related, I suppose. And you, you get that kind of plot across the the diagram here, uh, the weekly on activity, I'll show you that in a second, and then uh, students and reports. Um, page views are, are a sort of what you'll see in the weekly online activity. You also see participations, by the way, in, in a column here. But for someone like me who hasn't run many um, assignments yet in, in my module, um, I would typically have maybe a few formative activities um, uh, in the earlier weeks. I'd be largely maybe looking at the page views idea here. So um, again, with this weekly online activity, it plots the stuff across the diagram here. You get a kind of um, participation page views against weekly activity. But this will give you a good kind of a gauge as well for how students are, are maybe interacting with your course content. I mentioned noting that the, the LTI tool, for example, is noted here. So you just see this plug icon. I'm not sure if you see it there. Um, it, it might be slightly small on screen, but the LTI tool there refers to um, uh, Zoom because that's uh, that's an integration with Canvas. You'll see that there's 156 page views. So that's an indication that there's you know quite a lot of activity around that uh, tool, um, a lot more than you know all of the other stuff within the module. Um, obviously, there's other things that I've uh, released like briefs and so on. And this will give you a good idea of who's interacted with those or even who's just viewed them, uh, which is a nice, uh, uh, just, just a nice thing to be able to see. Participations again, uh, refers to assignments and quizzes and so on. But in my case here, I haven't ran many. So that's why there aren't, uh, there aren't any um, uh, numbers in that column. The other thing to mention, so I'll, I'll get to this in Canvas. I'll show you a live demonstration of this in a second. Um, but the other thing to to note as well, that's available outside of the, the, the analytics tool. So we'll, we'll look at analytics in a second. But there's also this thing called the student interactions report. And this gives you almost like a cross module view of your assignments. It's slightly hidden within Canvas. So if you go to your um, your dashboard, in canvas you'll see this area called uh, view grades here it's on it's underneath things like coming up and any kind of um, time related activities and, and assessments here uh, down here you'll see view grades and when you do click on view grades you get um, a kind of a, a view of all of the modules that you have but also maybe the average grade um, and also you have a, a link here for what's called a student interactions report now, many of you might not have seen this, um, and I suppose what's important is students also get a view of something like this. So this is useful for students. If they're learning on a module, they'll actually see their grades across the modules and, and be able to view something similar. What you get is um, is if you actually go into your, your uh, interaction report, you'd actually get a table like this, and this uh, breaks down the students. Um, their last day of ac of interaction. So sorry, the first one here reports the list of the students and you can basically click on that student to, to view them uh, specifically in the people section. You have the last time that they interacted in the second column here, you have their current score. So that's their overall score across uh, assignments. 
um, and their final score. So if you have kind of weighted assignments, obviously that value would be different. So, uh, and then you have ungraded assignments um, in in here. So this just this is an indication for you. Um, and then you can also uh, sort those. Um, and what you can also do then is you can uh, message the student directly. So I mentioned back at the very start that you have uh, three elements, really communication and assignments and, um, and your, uh, your learning resources. Um, when you're looking at any of these tools, they provide you almost with an action where you can, uh, communicate with the students. So that's, that's useful in there, I, I guess. So, uh, I'll look at both of those things right now in, in a demo. Uh, so the student interactions report and the uh, analytics, and if anyone has any questions, just throw them into the, the chat there, or if you're watching on YouTube into the comments area. So just bear with me just two seconds there. Okay, so we're in Canvas, we're in a sample module here. This is just a kind of a demo module that I've set up. And what I want to show you, first of all, is the new analytics area. So on the left hand side here, you have a, a, a series of menu items that you'd all be very familiar with. Uh, you have the new analytics link in there, but you also have it on the right hand side here um, for your kind of module menu. So I'm just going to click on the left one here, new analytics, and this will show me um, what I had in my screenshots a while ago. Now, again, because this is a demo module, I don't have a lot happening here, um, but I do have one assignment. I can see the course grade. There hasn't been much submission into this because this isn't a live module, but I just wanted to show you the different parts of the interface. So if we did have a lot of assignments and there were grades associated with those, um, maybe they're um, for instance, if there are quizzes and they were automated, you'd see those those grades coming up across the the diagram or the graph, um, you know, pretty quickly. Obviously, if you have grades to enter yourself, they won't appear until you've you've entered them in the grade book and and made those available. Um, but in your uh, in your area here, you have sections, so you can actually. Uh, look at the sections as i i mentioned a while ago you have the, the idea of cross-listing creates multiple sections but also then you have all of the individual people we have a lot of test people here obviously so um you don't don't really worry about that i suppose if you have students they'll have real student names in that list um the weekly online activity shows you uh, again a graph that plots out how the students have been interacting with the resources. So um, again, you know, the, the, it's based on page views. So you get the idea of you know what people have interacted with most across the the module, and if there are any um, sort of uh, assignments, you're, they're measured by participation. So there's a sample survey here, for example, in the, the new quizzes tool that has ten participations. Um, for students, then you have a, a kind of a blow by blow of of each of those students and the page view. So you're kind of drilling down as you go from course grade to, to weekly on an activity to the student view of things. Uh, so if we go into maybe just, we'll say uh, a student here with some interactions as a test student, we can get into the student view of things. And so this looks at the student grade, it looks at the student activity over the graph, and it also looks at any communication that you might have between you and the student. So, for example, if you are using the inbox, you'll have a very good idea of when you message a student. Um, and if you were looking at this overall as well, it would give you an idea of maybe students that you haven't been communicating with. Um, at the very uh, so if I go back to just course analytics here um, in each of those areas, you get the option to message students who. So if I go to message students who it gives me uh, the ability to message students who have not submitted um, a particular assignment or who are late and also have a particular score range. Um, you also have the ability really handily here to download a CSV. And in that CSV, you get uh, in each of those screens, you'll get a, a CSV export that you can basically uh, bring into something like Excel and look at yourself. Um, so one of the things I, I, I normally maybe recommend is if people find 
the interface in canvas may be a bit limiting what you can do is you can export all of this information out into an excel spreadsheet and you can sort of do your own queries on it and interrogate it that way where that's particularly useful is i think if you're comparing different data sets from different applications so if you're using zoom and you're using canvas you can actually export the data from each of those into csv and you can compare the two of them so if you're into your uh, data analysis or even into just doing queries in in excel that's a nice way of, of being able to generate your own views on on that data um, a relatively um, recent addition also, sorry, just one thing to, to note before I go into that is if you do click on the graph here, uh, you can actually drill down by uh, how students participated in particular resources um, and uh, likewise in the students area. So if I go into um, just one of these uh, users, I can actually go into my weekly on activity and I can see, um, you know, resources that they have or have not um, interacted with. So that's how you kind of get drill down reporting. You can go from the, um, the kind of the module or the class view right down to the individuals as well. Uh, and again, communication is in there as well. So back into my course analytics, just if you get lost, you can just go back um, to that level again. The reports are, are a nice way of being able to create uh, CSVs again. Um, now, they uh, they say near real-time data. I, I would maybe just um, uh, usually think of data as being 24 hours uh, refreshed. So just bear that in mind, uh, as we said in that that slide a while ago there uh, so you can generate kind of um, assignments um, with different filters so the filters are usually based on obviously the assignments but you can also filter by um, uh, by section as well um, so with the missing assignments I can run a report I can run a report on late assignments excuse assignments etc that class roster I mentioned already and course activity so all of this stuff creates uh, all, most of the data that we'll actually need but i suppose the trick is in in kind of interpreting that and engaging with the students if there's um, intervention needed so we have quite a lot of raw data that we can use there and you know i think the uh, user interface and in, in, and the analytics tool in canvas presents it relatively intuitively again if you want to go beyond that i would suggest maybe looking at exporting into uh, something like excel now the other thing i wanted to show you outside of the analytics tool is uh, the idea of student interaction so if i go to my dashboard and i go and i scroll down i go to view grades here um, I'll get that view that I uh, talked about a while ago. So if you're taking a module, you're, you're a student, you're going to see um, stuff that you're, you're doing there. But um, if you're teaching modules, which all of you are, you're going to have a kind of a, a, mod, a course level view of the stuff that you're doing or cross course view. So if you're, develop, if you're lecturing on multiple programs, you basically see all of the modules you're lecturing on. You're going to see uh, um, the average grade and you also see what's called the student interactions report. So if I click on the student interactions report in here, this gives me that table that I mentioned a while ago. So I have um, the list of students, their last interaction. So obviously this data is very stale in, in my module here because it's a test module. But if you were to look at a module that you're lecturing on right now, you're going to see uh, quite rich information in that. Um, so you're going to see your, um, your last student interaction, um, the, the faculty journal really isn't used in, in, in our instance. You have the current score um, and final score and then ungraded assignments. But also what you have is the, the ability to go here and to message students based on, uh, on that interactions report. So really handily, I suppose, is you have a way of, of getting to students quite quickly through this interactions report as well. So um, I think at a glance, if you're looking at both of those tools, your learning analytics uh, tool or new analytics and your student interactions report, you get a lot of kind of actionable data there potentially. Um, so they are the two things I wanted to show you in Canvas. There's also Zoom, obviously. So Zoom generates um, useful attendance information. And from within the Canvas uh, interface, the, the Zoom LTI has attendance and poll reports. So when you're um, looking to, to kind of interrogate that information, what you can do is you can go to um, your previous meetings 
um, and then in, in the LTI and the Zoom LTI, and then you can go to um, meeting reports in Canvas. And so um, those meeting reports show you your attendance, show you your join and leave time and the duration. Um, so this is quite handy, again, at a kind of a, just a bird's eye uh, level view. If you have polls, you'll also see poll reports. Um, one thing I want to note, I suppose, is that there'll be more obviously on Zoom um, and the data generated from that on Thursday in, in Dara's session. Um, I suppose what you can do, though, once you have these two parts of the puzzle, you have the, the canvas bit and the Zoom bit, you can export all that information and compare it, or you can actually just use those tools um, and just make your own impressions on what you've seen. Uh, you know, if students aren't attending the live sessions um, or not viewing the recordings, obviously there's maybe an intervention required there. Um, and th the next thing I want to talk to you maybe is a few tips just in terms of planning to use those, those that data or those learning analytics. So, um, some tips and again all of this stuff works together i wouldn't look at new analytics or zoom or student interaction reports operating in isolation or indeed things like communication and assignments all of this stuff works as a, almost like a constellation uh, things that you can use to complement each other and if i was looking at some tips in terms of how you use learning analytics um, there are a few things that that maybe I would suggest to put in place through your module uh, so that you can uh, generate uh, useful information and data, but also then have uh, maybe the appropriate interventions that are needed. So I would consider orientation activities. Obviously, we're, we're beyond that now at week five. But at the beginning of a module, I would recommend having some orientation activities and they would be just um, maybe things like knowledge checks, surveys, etc. that gauge understanding of particular concepts in week one, week two, week three. Introductory discussions are good because discussions in Canvas will, will um, provide some participation data. So we looked at those three uh, things that generate participation. So assignments, quizzes and discussions. The guide resources are important. So, you know, I suppose if, for example, you have um, students that are falling behind uh, that you think may be at risk, um, some additional resources sometimes to, to point them to, you can really quickly and in an agile way create H5P interactions. Um, we looked at H5P last week there's a, a recording of that on our youtube channel if you're interested there'll be more on it but h5p a really nice way of of, of uh you know creating interactions that check understanding or for revision purposes screencasts are obviously very very valuable in terms of of what you can um do in terms of revision or or uh or just maybe providing additional context one really useful thing that you could actually put into place quite soon, maybe next week, is a survey. And this is maybe the idea of a mid-semester survey. I suppose the idea here in a survey to your students using something like new quizzes that you can maybe ask them some key questions um, just in terms of how they're getting on with the module, if there's any areas that they think that they need more support in or that they're maybe uh, that they are falling behind in. You know, you could maybe identify that in something like a mid-semester survey. That semester, that mid-semester survey doesn't have to be very complicated. It could just have a few key questions, but it can provide you maybe with valuable insights into how students are doing at that point in time. So again, in in terms of timing, we're we're kind of right in the the middle of a, of an optimal time to to do these things. So between week four and week six, I was saying, and that mid-semester survey could happen in week six. Um, build in, you know, Zoom check-ins with your students. So Dara will talk to you about the things you can do in Zoom on Thursday. But, you know, a really uh, useful thing if you do find a student that, that needs a bit more support or that, you know, that you want to check in with, you could use Zoom um, and just have a one-to-one a, a -one session with those or with a group of students, in fact. Uh, use the calendar just to set out dates and activities. You know, so I suppose the syllabus tool is is really useful from a student's point of view because they get a, a view of all of the stuff that they need to do that's date related and so anything you put into your canvas calendar will show up on that so that's a really useful tool as well and obviously the zoom sessions or classes that you schedule are, are available in there as well so i'm running almost over time i want to just 
very quickly show you something we're we're also working on maybe in the form of a kind of a checklist that you can use through the semester and the idea here is that you think of um, the start middle and the end of your your module or the semester and the things that you can do in terms of analytics and data to um, uh, just to have a sort of a strategy around it I suppose so um, there are three things uh, I talk about maybe module analytics uh, student analytics and then assignments and quizzes um, so the idea here is that you think of maybe a strategy right through the whole module in the semester and things you can do so for example I mentioned orientation obviously we're, we're slightly beyond that point now but you know there are maybe some of those things you could do um, the middle bit there we're, we're on that so we could look at you know um, uh, looking at trends and participation so we looked at how students can are maybe participating in particular resources submissions very important if you have assignments set up so you see you know whether they're submitting or not which is important you can sort by score so you can sort um, in your module analytics tool you can sort the students by score you have sorting tools there and in your um, grades you can just check the distribution of grades as well and then you know towards the end of the semester when you're looking at your, your checklist again you can just look at a few of those things so sorting students by their current score based on weighting of assignments etc uh, message maybe at risk or failing students so students that are very low scores or haven't submitted and you can also again look at trends so uh, I suppose the idea with this checklist is that you have a few things you can do at particular points in the semester and these all relate to communication again assignments and to uh, learning materials that you are additional resources you can provide and in this uh, checklist again stuff relating to student analytics so you know you can view the interactions report that we talked about and you can message students early on through the inbox um, in the middle you could maybe um, look at again things like assessments with low scoring students um, the access report so with the student interactions report we could see when students had maybe last interacted with a module um, and you can view maybe your prior communication as well. So within the analytics tool, we have the ability to see if we communicated with students or not, especially if you've large, maybe groups of students, you can see students that you maybe didn't communicate with. Um, but more importantly, view when you did, I suppose, with other students as well. And then that last bit there, again, viewing access reports, communicating and messaging students with missing assignments. So they're all maybe similar things you're doing in each of these phases, but they're maybe distinct to the to the phase or the time in the semester. And the other one here then is looking again at assignments in this context. Uh, moderation of assignments early on, um, looking in the middle at communicating with low um, scoring students and the idea again of something like a quiz so you can use the new quiz tool as a survey tool to ask quiz, um, students some key questions uh, how they're getting on and maybe just identify maybe students that are uh, falling behind or at risk uh, because of um, not engaging with the content and then at the end again it's looking at the grades area it's looking at the breakdown if you're using quizzes uh, looking at those final assessments and 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 uh, I suppose looking at all of this data uh, again as almost like a constellation of data and how you can act upon it so there are a few maybe just um, examples of things you could do. Uh, we're going to probably work these into a, a kind of a, a one pager in terms of what you can do. So that's uh, that's useful. I'll just correct the spelling of that there while I see it. Um, and then the next thing um, in terms of intervention, some tips maybe I suppose interventions should point to resources. So it's I suppose it's no good maybe trying to um, you know uh, communicate with your students tell them that they're not engaging and not give them something to do. One very basic thing is just to, to ask them to review a resource, to reflect on something. Reflection is a big, a big one, a big favorite of mine. So, you know, ask them to reflect on something that you've done previously or something that's just out. Uh, take a sample quiz, review a H5P activity. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to prescribe them or direct them to something they can action uh, based on on their progress and you know at this point in the semester at uh, week five six this is an ideal time to to make those suggestions to the students and uh, try and do it as early on as, as possible so they're not um you know developing 
um, learning habits that that will ne negatively affect them later on.